Tool companies are gonna hate me after this rebellious project. They want me to just throw out these tools, but instead of submitting to their plan ops lessons, I'm gonna give them a different source of power and resurrect them with some engineering magic. Hey guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Lechnology, where engineering meets tinkering to create some really cool projects. These tools are getting thrown out because of their dead batteries, and a replacement costs more than the new tool. But today we're gonna give them a second chance. I will show you what I chose to power these tools, the mechanical and electrical design, and most importantly, will these tools actually work in the end when we put them to the test. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull this off, but I'm willing to dive into some engineering magic to make it happen. After we unveil the fate of these tools, I'm going to reveal a design hack that I use for this project that's going to revolutionize your 3D printed designs, ensuring the perfect print on the first iteration. Stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss this game changer. Okay, so how do we get electricity into these tools? Well, one idea is to convert them to quarter tools so I can just plug them to the wall, which sounds straightforward, but not quite. In order to pull that off, you need a massive power supply to change the AC power into DC that the tools need. When I hook these tools up to my hefty 10 amp power supply, I can easily max it out by just stopping the tools with my finger. So it turns out, quarter tools, while a classic solution, just comes with too many challenges. The second idea came to mind when I was thinking about my 18 volt cordless Milwaukee tools. What if I can make an adapter for these tools that accepts Milwaukee batteries? This could be the game changer that I need to bring these tools back to life. So the first step we need to do is disassemble the old batteries and see what we got inside. So what I'm going to do is take the top half of the old battery and 3D print some kind of an adapter for the bottom half. It'll essentially be a bridge between the old Bosch tool and the new Milwaukee battery. I'll add some sort of pins to make contact with the battery. And after that, all that's left is to screw it back together and bam, I'll have revamped tools ready to roll. All right, the design is complete, so let's bring this into our slicer software. This step is crucial because it generates G-code, which is the instructions for the 3D printer to bring this design to life. Everything snaps together perfectly and the parts join completely flush, thanks to a design hack that I'll share with you at the end of the video. With the fitment confirmed, I 3D printed these sleek adapters all in black. For the electrical connections, I will solder a wire onto the spade connector and press fit it into the adapter to make a robust connection with the new battery. With the assembly complete, I've crafted three battery adapters, one for each tool. Now the moment of truth has arrived. Let's put our innovation to the test and see if these battery adapters can truly bring these tools back to life. They held up to the test, which gives me confidence to use these tools without hesitation. But how did I print these adapters so effortlessly? Earlier I mentioned that I'd share a hack with you to get your parts to line up flush and snap together perfectly on the very first try. It's such a simple trick. First, scan or take a picture of the profile that you're trying to copy. Then you're going to bring it into your solid modeler and make sure you have it scaled to the appropriate size. After you can use your sketch tools to easily and quickly trace whatever profile you want onto the drawing. Don't forget features like screw holes. Wherever you place them on the drawing, they will be printed there exactly. 
After you're done the sketch, you can extrude it and add any features you want onto the model. All that's left is slicer, G-code, and print, and right off the build plate, everything snaps together perfectly. Of course, you don't have to design these adapters yourself. I found out that I could have just bought these adapters online, but what's the fun in that? Overall, I'm thrilled with how these adapters turned out. They seamlessly integrate the old tool with their new found batteries, resulting in exceptional performance. I now have a Sawzall planer and hammer drill added to my collection, and it also gives me an excuse to buy more batteries. And who doesn't want more batteries? Because I want more batteries. I know you want more batteries. Everyone wants more batteries. You want more batteries. Make the adapters, get more batteries. Come on guys. If you like tools and 3D printing things for your toolbox, you might also enjoy my magnetic socket organizer video. If you found value or enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Your like makes a huge difference, especially for a newer channel like mine. So thank you for the support. Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I can't wait to show you guys my next project.